Hey, how's it going? It's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number eight of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. It's been about maybe a month since I did the last video. And within that time, Brian's been hard at work coding away. Uh, the firmware has gone through a lot of changes and updates for the better. Uh, there's a lot of new features and functionality and he's refined the interface a little bit. So let's take a look at some of those things. Um, this is currently running OS 0.1.6 and it's pre-patch 11. So it's not the official release, but it's almost there. So let's take a look. So I'm just on track one. I'm set to a mono configuration. And if I go to insert a unit, you'll notice now that it's a little bit cleaner looking. So those like big square like rectangle sort of things. We now have like these nice clean lines. You can scroll through things. It's nice and smooth. Um, let's just take a look at any unit here if I add it. Uh, let's say let's say I wanted a filter, whatever. Um, now, if I select it, we now finally have bypass for this unit. So if you're working with a whole bunch of processes, you can engage or disengage the unit if you just want to hear what it sounds like without it without having to delete it and re-add it, which is great. Um, another new thing, uh, which is I've been waiting for, for since the beginning, is you can finally rename units. So if you're building complex patches, you have a whole bunch of mixers, you have a whole bunch of processes, you can rename it to whatever you want. And now that unit's called something that means something to me in context with whatever patch I'm building, which is great. Um, also, another thing to note is on any parameter that you can assign a source to, just like before, if we go into that, well, you notice that this is a little bit more uh, enhanced. Before, it was just this, li this big list you had to scroll through. Now, you sort of have a quick sort of overview glance of what signals you have coming into 301. And if I select my example, my A bank of inputs, I can hit that. Then I see the scope, so what's happening. Um, if I can collapse it, I can go check out my gate inputs. Oh, it looks like I have a gate there, which is great. So just more of like a bird's eye view of everything that's coming into the 301 in the moment. Um, also, you now have the actual audio outputs of the 301 as an input source, whereas before I had to take an output, loop it back into itself. So we freed up some uh, I.O. being able to record an output. So what this means is I could have a sample player on number four and I can internally digitally route that to input number one as an example. So lots of power with that functionality as well. Um, here's another thing here. Um, and I, I love this. I didn't notice it right away. And then as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is great. So let's say I go to insert a unit, check out down here. Now we have sort of a a filter to sort of narrow down this list of units. And it's not that important now, but once uh, the third party units open up, um, this list is gonna get very big and you're not gonna be wanting to just endlessly skim through a massive list. So instead, if I click and hold on one of these guys, I can be like, I want a delay. And there's all the delays available. I want a filter. There's the filters available mixing, limiter, the mixer, and so on. So it's it's really great just to quickly be like, oh, I need a, uh, a delay, there it is, bang. Or I wanna modulate something, here's all the processes that offer that sort of functionality. Um, the other really cool thing is um, you can save your own patches of units and they can show up on the list with everything else. So if you sort of work from a core set of like sound building ideas in your workflow, like it could be a bunch of loopers, mixers, whatever, you can have that showing up here instead of having to load presets and do all that sort of thing, which is really great. Um, don't ask about these names. These are just random name generated things. I didn't come up with those. <laughs> um, and if we look, and actually, this is this is really what I wanted to talk about in this video because uh, it's offered it's it's was a little bit confusing at first, um, but once you sort of see what it does, it's it's really useful. So there's a unit here called custom unit, and what that is 
it's sort of like a container to hold a ton of other units. So if I open it, we can add whatever we want in here. We could add, you know, effects, we could add oscillators and so on. And you might be asking, well, that sort of looks the same as a mixer. Let's add one of those. Sort of looks the same, except it doesn't have a volume knob on the end. Uh, with a mixer, you, you go into it and it's the same sort of thing. You can add a bunch of processes, um, CV controllers and whatever. The core difference is, let me just remove this, delete. Oh, and just as a side note, um, when you create a custom unit now, um, it just comes up with a ran random name until you release it, until you rename it. So it's kind of funny what, what will uh, show up there it's, it, at different occasions. Like, let me just re-add it here. Entire poet. <laughs> okay. Um, here's where it gets interesting. So the main thing that that tends to be a problem is... If you have a really complex patch, it's sort of hard to remember what all your CV controls are doing after a while. So what a custom unit allows you to do is have a core set of, I guess you could call them like master controls that can then feed all sorts of units anywhere within. So let, let me just show you how that works. So I'm gonna click on this guy. You'll notice there's, uh, actually let's rename this first. I'll just call this, uh, I'm just gonna call this synth. So synth, do that, and where's the H? There. So I'm gonna call this custom unit synth. And okay, so there's a menu here called edit controls. So let's go in there. So if I'm controlling a synth from the outside world, if we're gonna use this as a synth oscillator, I'm gonna need a few external controls. So I'm going to need a volt per octave control, so I can add that control. Uh, I'm absolutely going to need a gate, and maybe a few CVs to control, you know, maybe the ADSR release time or maybe a detuning option. So let's add two CV controls, and I'll get out of there by pressing up. And you'll notice now that this custom unit has these four core controls right on the main screen. So once you have all this stuff routed internally, you don't have to dive into this unit anymore if you're happy with the sound it's creating. You can just freely adjust these here. And like anything else, you can assign these to an external source. So let's do that first. I'm gonna say I want my Volt Proctive Master Control to be A2, and my A2 in this situation is um, my Sputnik keyboard's uh, arpeggiator uh, pitch control. So do that. And I'm gonna grab the gate from the Sputnik as well. So let's do that. And you notice it's, it's a lot faster to navigate through my inputs and see what's happening because I have all these little meters now, which are great. So I think Gate number one is my Sputnik gate, and you can see it fire in here. Uh, depending on the application, you might want to know how fast it's running, which is cool. Uh, CV1, I have my LS1 light strip, and let's see which one that is. I know it's one of my A inputs, so let me just touch it over here. Ah, there it is, so it's A1, use that. And then the CV2 control, I'll use a, uh, another LS1 light strip, and I believe that's wired into A2. And yeah, oh, A3, there it is. So, we have my custom control set. So now let's, let's build something. So here's an example. I'm gonna open this custom unit now. I'm gonna insert a mixer, and let's, let's make an oscillator. So, I'm going to put it within this mixer. So let's go into it. I'm going to add a sine wave. Where is that? So if I don't want to scroll through this, I can sort of adjust these categories until I find what I want. So it's a source. And there it is. And let's turn this up. 
And I should be hearing that. Why not? Oh, hold on. I think my uh, my audio output. Oh, my speakers are off. There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's go back in there. Here is my oscillator. And I'm just going to dirty this up a little bit. I'm going to add a quantizer to uh, just make it a little bit more grainy. A little bit more square wavy, I guess. Get some interesting odd harmonics going. Hey, sorry about that. I literally had a brain meltdown and I forgot what I was saying. And that's what happens when there's no script. So this is not bad, you know, video number eight, and this will be the first edit. I just didn't want to redo the first nine minutes. So let's continue off uh, from assigning pitch to this oscillator. Um, I've since sort of erased all my assignments and stuff and I'm starting again. So here's our custom unit. And if we go into it, we have this mixer that I've renamed OSC for oscillator. Let's go into that. Here is our sine oscillator, and here is our quantize after that to give it some gunge, some odd harmonics and stuff. So I'm going to go to the sine waves uh, volt per octave control, and here's what we're going to do. I'm going to assign it the uh, 1 volt per octave CV, and usually what we do is we would go directly to our CV inputs right here and assign it. We'd do this. But you know what? I actually don't want to do that. If we go back in, look at it, look at this. We have this thing here now called locals. And what this is, is those custom controls that we made. So there's our volt per octave. So let's assign it from here. And this isn't as, uh, it'll be evident to why this is important in a second. So I'm going to add that. And let's just add one more thing here, and bear with me. I'm gonna insert a mixer. And within that mixer, I'm gonna call this, uh, this is backspace here. I'm gonna call this uh, detune. So now we have our detune. I'm gonna go in here. I'm going to add an offset. Where is that? Oh. So there's a there's our offset control. Um, I'm going to set it to an extreme, like something like that. But what I'm going to do is right after that, I'm going to add a VCA. So we don't hear it immediately. And what I'm going to do is, this VCA control, I'm going to assign one of our other local controls. Uh, I'm going to assign it CV2, which was my second LS1 light strip. And let's see if that works. So, there it is. It's very subtle. I'm, uh, my finger's at the top of the light strip. And now I'm letting go. Cool. Okay. So let's say that this oscillator is everything I wanted it to be. I mean, you can obviously add as much as you want within there, but just for this demo, I'm going to keep it simple. Let's set this to minus six so we have a little bit of headroom. And let's save this as a preset. I'm going to call it, uh, let's go new file, and we'll go demo space. We'll call it demo os. Cool. So now we have this thing saved as a preset. So now we've done all that work. Um, let's add another one. So instead of having to go through that whole process of adding all that stuff again, I can just create a new mixer. I can go load preset, and there it is. But do you notice that now this oscillator 
is being controlled by those exact same sort of macro controls for this custom unit. So if I go into this, let's let's actually rename this. I'll rename this, uh, I'll just add a two to the end so we know what's going on. So, and I'll add a one to the first one. There, OS1, OS2. Uh, let's go into this. Let's drop this down an octave now. Notice our CV is still done. And let's go into this tuning for a second. Let's, you know what, let me add one more. I'll insert one more mixer. We'll load my uh, demo oscillator preset. There's another one. And oops, let's go into that. Let's drop that down an octave too, so it's nice and beefy. Or maybe an octave. Cool, so I'm gonna go into this and I'm just gonna remove this, uh, I'm gonna mute this detune control. And listen to what happens now if I adjust that light strip. So two of these oscillators are gonna detune and one of them won't. So that these custom controls are basically saving me a ton of time having to remember what's assigned to what. All I need to worry about are these master controls at the front of our custom unit, our synth unit. So let's, just, let's add a few more things here. I'm gonna go in. Let's add another oscillator. So we have three oscillators now. I'm just gonna rename this one. I'll add a three on the end of it so we know what we're up to. Oh man, I'm having the worst luck today. Uh, my phone ran out of space and the recording stopped. So I was just about to add a fourth oscillator. So here's our first three. And I'll insert, I'll add a mixer channel, load preset. Here's our demo oscillator file. And I'll hit enter. And let's go into this. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll add a fifth, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Actually... And I'm just gonna just have this naturally detuned slightly. So we get a little bit of uh, chorus happening. Okay. And I'll go into this guy. I'm gonna rename it. I'll add a four to the end of it. All right, let's 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 build the rest of our, uh, our synth here. So here's our four oscillators. Uh, we'll add a filter after that. Um, you could add a filter per Per mixer if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do this the quicker way. Uh, let's the, switch this to course adjust. I'm not going to really set that yet. And after that, let's get a VCA in here so it's not so uh, continuous. VCA, set our gain to one. And within that, uh, our trigger source will be one of our locals again, our gate signal that we've set up. Okay, <laughs> so we need an ADSR after that. Otherwise, it's pretty blippy. Let's uh, up the decay. And let's add another uh, control signal here. So I want to be able to control the release. And I'm going to use my other local source, which is my first light strip, this guy. And we'll make sure it applies at 100%. There we go. I'm actually, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually moving that strip right now. So that's not as important. Having a local assigned to one thing isn't as, as interesting as, let's say you had 20 ADSRs. Like obviously you wouldn't want to have to go into each one of those and reassign it. Um, instead, you have your master synth control. Well, that's my detune. I think CV1's my... Uh, there it is. So all this, what this allows you to do is control a whole bunch of parameters 
all at once without having to go under the hood. And the reason this is important is let's we can save this whole thing as a preset now. So I'll save this as uh, we'll call this uh, Synthy. Sure. So here's an example. Let's say I take this out. And let's say five days of chain have gone by and I don't remember what my CV controls were, right? Like they could be anything, you know, I, I, unless I wrote it down, which is unlikely, I won't remember what that stuff was, which is a problem because if you have an oscillator sort of setup that has a whole bunch of stuff within it, you'd have to go into all of that stuff and reassign it, which would be kind of terrible. So like, Obviously, it's better if we load our synthy preset. And it's loading all the guts within. And now we can be like, okay, here's our four parameters. This is all we'd have to go back and reassign. So here's our Volt Proctive. Let's go into that. Um, now it's, it's remembering before, so we could actually patch it in. But in this case, you know what? I'll just clear it. And let's see what we have. I think this C, there it is. So now C2 is our uh, our pitch control. Our gate originally was G1, but you know what? I could repatch into G1 or I can just find it. Uh, oh, that's not it. Where is it? Oops. <laughs> so it looks like it's probably B, oh, there it is, B3. And CV1 looks like it was patched into A1. And at this point, it's patched to B1. So I can go in here, I can reassign it B1 if I wanted to. So that's working. But anyway, the whole point is you can have like the most complex thing happening. And instead of having to go into the internal guts of your entire setup, you only just have to look at the surface to reassign or adjust your, your core parameters. So that's actually affecting all four oscillators. If I want to retune it or something like that, or you know, slightly retune it to jive with external gear or whatever. Um, and of course, oh man, I had another one of those brain drains. Anyway, what I was getting at is, so normally you'd go and save a preset but another interesting thing you can do is if you click on this and save preset, if you actually navigate to the chooser folder, let's go within that, and I'll call this uh, synth neil. Just so I remember what it is. Now, if we're starting again, like let's say I was just powering up for the first time, I was doing something completely different. And I go to insert, it actually shows up in our list. So, which is great. Like, let's say I use that all the time. Maybe it was like some sort of sampler patch or whatever. Now it's in that list. So I can just hit it and it's done all that work for me. And there it is. And again, our four parameters that I want to deal with are right there. And again, you could just, if you want to change the assignments, you only have to change these four things and the 20 things it's pointing to up, just figure itself out, figure itself out automatically, um, which is really cool. So that's, that's the main difference between a custom unit and a mixer. Uh, mixers used to mix a whole bunch of signals together, whereas a custom unit is sort of like an encapsulated mix of all your processes you want in one block with these custom controls. So hopefully this video wasn't too erratic and all over the place, but uh, that should give you a good idea of what you can use these for. And again, it's, it's just a way to save time and make things easier for you as uh, your uh, setups get more complicated. So with that, I'm going to uh, bypass it, still running, and uh, this is that time where I say, see you later, and uh, I'll talk soon. Cheers. Bye.